Those who we pray favors consider the future, and at the moment when they fall, they will find support. Let's listen for the word of God. Before faith came, we were guarded under the law, locked up until faith that was coming would be revealed, so that the law became our custodian until Christ, so that we might be made righteous by faith. But now that faith has come, and we are no... This is what happens when you don't have a stand in front of you. Longer, under, a custodian. And it was quite different wording. It'd be interesting to compare these two scriptures from the 830 service. You are all God's children through faith in Christ Jesus. All of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free, nor is there male or female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. Now, if you belong to Christ, then indeed you are Abraham's descendants, heirs according to the promise. This is the word of God for the people of God. I love that line. You have both made and ruined my day. I have to admit, as I, as I began the process of finding and selecting a movie for this Sunday, I was looking for something that would tie into the VBS theme of Funfair. And there aren't a whole lot of circus movies out there. There are a couple, but uh, pickings are slim. And I wasn't quite sure when I watched this the first time if I would even find anything in it to use. Um, and I have to admit that it would not make the top five of any of my movie categories, uh, any genre, except maybe animated stories about animals that join the circus. <laughs> There's only about one other that I can think of off the top of my head, and that would be Dumbo. And this would come in a far second. But it... Lo and behold, there is actually uh, there is a Christian message that we can glean from this story. And thanks to my son who helped me watch this movie about 47 times, uh, we found it. I'm thankful for him and his, 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 uh, his enthusiasm uh, over this movie. Uh, how many of you know what a Dwayne Reeds is? I didn't either, but there were nine of them on the same street in Manhattan. And so I looked it up. Dwayne Reed's is a pharmacy. And lo and behold, there are streets in Manhattan that will have a Dwayne Reed, you know, every three blocks. So nine, nine Dwayne Reed's on the same street. I uh, guess you have to be a New Yorker to really understand that one. But uh, anyway, th there you have it. But have you ever felt like that? Like someone has both made and ruined your day at the same time? Or have you ever gone out of your way to do something that you thought would be amazing? For someone only to be stunned with their response or lack of response? This happens when we are in relationships. As much as we want to make those around us feel special, sometimes we fall short. Not because of our effort, but because we cannot control his or her response. And sometimes, no matter how hard someone tries to make us feel better, we just aren't in a place to accept it with the gratitude we ought to. We all pray with me. God, is with great gratitude that we are here today. We ask that you make us available to your spirit. That you let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Well, this is the case with Alex the lion. He is so homesick for the Central Park Zoo that even though he is overwhelmed by the effort uh, of his friends, uh, he cannot overcome the deep sadness he has for home. If you are familiar with the DreamWorks series, uh, this is the third installment of the Madagascar uh, movies. And Alex and Marty and Gloria and Melman have all escaped from the Central Park Zoo. And of course, they end up in Madagascar, then they end up in Africa. And in the third installment, they make their way to France 
to chase down the penguins who are gambling in Monaco and through the process become Europe's most wanted, uh, particularly by an insane animal control officer from France. She is bent on having the head of Alex the lion uh, to mount on her trophy wall. Desperate to escape, the four lie to a group of European circus animals so that they may board the circus train in hopes of finding their way back to New York. Through the process, the four find that their home is with one another and their new relationships in the circus. They had indeed become circus animals. <clears throat> This is similar to the transformation that Paul is referring to in his scripture. In Christ Jesus, we are one. There is no longer Jew or Greek or slave or free or male or female, just circus. I mean, Christian. No longer Jew or Greek. No longer slave or free, no longer male or female just Christian, heirs of the kingdom of God. This week at Vacation Bible School, we spent a great deal of time examining what it meant to be a neighbor and how a neighbor acts. The Bible is full of great illustrations on how to be a good neighbor, and it's also full of illustrations on how to be a poor neighbor and what happens when we act that way. Uh, we did not really go into these stories. We want to emphasize good behavior and, and teach, the, teach the children uh, how to be a good neighbor. So we didn't really look at the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. That would be an interesting vacation Bible school, however, though. Darcy, where Darcy? Uh, remember that for next year. No. Uh, it's not really a place you want to go with kids. Or going through the prophets and, and watching how God condemns his own children because of how they have forgotten to love God and love neighbor. But that's what it boils down to. So this week we looked at those stories from Abraham and his hospitality to the three strangers and the blessing that God was able to give to the children through, uh, give to Abraham and Sarah through the birth of their child, uh, through Abraham's hospitality, as well as looking at, even into the New Testament to stories such as Jesus and Zacchaeus and how Zacchaeus' heart was turned inside out and how he was overwhelmed with the love of God after he had received forgiveness from Jesus before he even asked for it. Before he even asked for it, Jesus had forgiven him. This man that no one liked, that everyone despised, who had treated people poorly, very poorly. Jesus shows him what it means to be a child of God. From Abraham to Zacchaeus, A to Z. We witnessed how we are to love God and neighbor, and we worked on remembering it a little bit every day. And by the end of the week, we had learned the great commandment. Love God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Even those neighbors who mistreat you, even those neighbors who persecute you, and even those neighbors who wish to do you harm. Because when we love with the love of God, it is the love of God that has the power to transform. This transformative power in its own way is evident in Madagascar 3. See, the circus animals eventually find out that our four heroines had lied about their prior identities as being circus animals and were ready to part way with them as soon as they reached America. And in a bizarre twist of fate, the four animals ended up 
exactly where they wanted, back in the Central Park Zoo. The only difference was what they remembered was not what they came back to. They remembered their prior life as something great, as something extravagant, only to be reminded of the walls that were between them and the captivity in which they were enslaved and found themselves in grave peril from the long arm of the law. The circus had set them free. They were free from the law. Just as being in Christ frees us from the law. They were in grave peril from this insane animal control officer. And of course, the news reaches the circus animals who are lamenting the loss of their new friends. And even though they had lied about their prior lives, it becomes apparent that their new identities are now as circus animals. And if we learn anything, it's that circus stick together. Yes, circus stick together. As Christians, what unites us is far stronger than anything that can separate us because we are God's children. It is through God that we are united, which also means that we must let go of all of the things that we allow to separate us. It does not matter. It does not matter. It does not matter how we got here or what our prior intentions were. For now, we are all circus. I mean, children of God. When I was 17, I witnessed the dark underbelly of the church. Because as much as we try as a church, we cannot overcome our humanity. And when humans get involved and human desires take place over the will of God, ugly things can happen. And I witnessed something that I considered atrocious in a church. Someone very dear to me, I thought had been horribly mistreated by the institution which is supposed to be the exact opposite. This led to a disillusionment period in my life that lasted at least a decade. It enabled me to become entirely self-righteous. And the few times that I did go to church, I sat there arms crossed, essentially condemning all of those around me because all they were was a bunch of hypocrites. They didn't really want to be there. They're only coming to church so that when the election rolls around next time, they know that they've got a good support base for the school board election. Their, youth, their children never come to anything unless it's a fun time. What a bunch of hypocrites. <clears throat> and that's how I felt. And that by far was the time in my life where my faith development was the worst. And I can't remember what it was, or who said it, or if anything was said at all. But one day I had an epiphany sitting in that pew, condemning all of these other people around me, that I'm a hypocrite too.
We are all falling short of what we can be in Christ. But it doesn't matter. It matters, but not in the sense that I want to talk about it. Because no matter how we got here today, we are here now. No matter that the intention of Alex the lion and Gloria the hippopotamus and Melman the giraffe and Marty the zebra of getting on that circus train, they found their true identity when they had been welcomed aboard. Which brings us back to being a neighbor. We are to welcome. We are to be hospitable. We are called to be bold and forgive even before someone asks us for forgiveness. The great commandment tells us to love our neighbor as ourself. And the bonds of Christian unity ought to strengthen our unity. And how do we stick together? By growing together in our faith, in our service to others, in our love of God, and through prayer. Because, as we know, the family that prays together stays together. I'm going to invite the praise band to come back up, and as they are, I uh, invite you to be in prayer with me. God, we are united in your love. A love that is more important and greater than anything that can separate us or divide us. Lord, we ask that you help us focus more on that love and less on the things that separate. More on the sharing of spirits. More on the service of others. As we continue to be neighbors not just to the community that is already here, but the one that is preparing to come, no matter what their intention. God, we thank you so much. In your son's name we pray. Amen.